name's Omo Moses, and I'm 38 years old. And what are you doing right now to make the world a better place? Mm, what am I doing? Well, first, I'm trying to make myself a better person. Um, and so I think part of making the world a better place is really um, taking the time to discover your own talent and your own potential um, and figure out how you can put that to use to um, create wonderful families, to build community, to have empowering and um, strong friendships. Um, but then also, outside of that, um, I've done a lot of work organizing young people to create a space where young people think about the challenges of their generation. And we've looked at education as one of the critical um, keys for young people to really be successful in the 21st century. And part of what we want to do is to get young people invested in ensuring that all children, no matter where they come from, um, have access to high quality education in America. Cool. And so what's, uh, what project are you working on right now? So the project that I've been working on the last 15 years is called the Young People's Project. And it began in Mississippi and is an outgrowth of an organization called the Algebra Project. And what we do is use math literacy as a way to engage young people in um, getting active around education. And so part of what we want to do is to create opportunities for young people to create high quality learning experiences for, for other young people and also for young people to build demand for high quality education. And so the way that shakes out is that we think of young people as all having the ability to be learners, teachers, leaders, and organizers. And um, we want them to develop as learners, to develop as teachers, to develop as leaders and organizers, and create opportunities for them to do that in an educational environment or context, to create opportunities for them to develop in a community context, as well as think about um, themselves as citizens of the country and how do they um, become active and engaged in helping the country live up to its promises. Great. And how do you do that? How do we do that? So we do what we call math literacy workshops and we have three different types of categories of activities. Um, one centers around math games and we want all young people like to have fun, they like to play games and we want to use games to help other young people learn math and so um, we have high school students that are um, supported by college students that would go into a boys and girls club, they would go into a community center, they'd go into a school based after school program and they'd play math games with um, third through sixth grade students and use that as an opportunity to build confidence, um, shift attitudes, place value on learning math, and also build skills that um, are important to students being able to um, make their way through high school and enter college. Um, another way that we do that is with what we call Algebra Labs. And so Algebra is a gatekeeper course and um, if young people are able to get through algebra in the eighth grade or ninth grade, they're more likely to graduate from high school, they're more likely to get into college, and hopefully they're able to, it opens the doors to um, career paths that really um, allow them to develop their own talents and their ability and contribute to society. Um, and then the last kind of workshop or activity centers around the idea of bridging math literacy and digital media. Um, and so we have young people that are learning how to program and connect the language of mathematics to the language of programming and to create in a digital environment. And so they're learning how to create animations and games and other things that other people can use uh, to have fun but also to learn. Um, so that's that work is what we call our education work, or work that really involves young people um, working to help other young people learn. Um, another area of work is around young people creating spaces that bring people together in their community um, that allows them to work on things that are important to them. And so we've done a number of different events 
um, that are youth organized, that are intergenerational, that bring together people to um, get connected, to share stories, share experiences, um, to share food, um, but then also to think about how we can work together to improve the quality of life in our neighborhoods and in our communities, and um, to see young people as being invested and not apathetic in their neighborhoods and communities. Um, and then the last piece is we want to look at this issue of education and particularly the idea of um, all young people having a right to high quality education and so how do we um, involve young people in having a conversation with other students, with parents, with teachers, with school administrators about the right to high quality education and what's required to ensure that all young people have access to high quality education. Obviously something you're passionate about. Was there a moment that uh, you decided you want to do this or what was the inspiration for this mm -hmm. whole thing? What was the inspiration? So in many ways um, continuing in um, to do the work that my parents did and so my parents were involved in the civil rights movement in the 60s and were in Mississippi and um, really risked their lives like a lot of other young people um, to ensure that um, everyone in Mississippi had access to the right to vote. Um, and so naturally I grew up with the stories of that movement and grew up around some of the people that participated in that movement and um, but tried to find my own path and so um, I was a student athlete in high school and in college um, and um, after college I wasn't sure what I wanted to do and it became natural that um, I asked my dad for an opportunity to work with him and through that process um, and through the connection with the students in Mississippi that I began working with I really um, found a place where I felt that I could do something that was valuable um, and part of the, the backdrop to that is that I think a whole generation of young people have been trapped in um, the educational system and spit out of the educational system into prisons, into um, um, many things. And so the generation of young people that have been impacted by that are the kids that I grew up with and that I'm still close with. And so I saw um, myself doing work with young people that would prevent that from continuing to happen to them. Um, and so I think that's what's inspired me and has um, sustained the work, I think. Another thing that has kept me doing the work over the last 15 years is being able to build community and um, being feeling connected to young people across the country and um, that sense of family and that sense of um, friendship and that sense of kind of common ground and collective interest has um, really motivated me to keep doing the work. What are some of the, the biggest challenges you see facing young people now? Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting, I was at a recent um, gathering at Williams College in Massachusetts and we went to a high school and we asked young people um, well, we first we told them, gave them a quote that Bernice Johnson Regan, who was a member of Sweet Honey in the Rock and was a member of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee in the 60s, basically she said that each generation must find and face those things that are crippling them. Um, and so we asked them, well, what's crippling your generation? And so they had about 30 different things that they mentioned that they saw as um, challenges for their generation. So I think it's a little different than when I grew up. I, you know, um, I think racism was an issue for me or on my consciousness. Um, nuclear weapons was an issue for me. But there weren't too many issues that I was thinking about at that age. But they've been bombarded by a variety of issues, um, particularly with the env environment and the idea of sustainability. Um, and so there isn't necessarily consensus around what we as a generation need to work on to ensure that um, we can continue to make progress. 
Um, and I think a lot of people say that um, this is one of the first generations that's going to be worse off than some of the previous generations. And generally, we've seen that with, it, with each generation, they're starting from a better place. And so I think this generation is inheriting a lot of the waste and a lot of the mess that's been created by previous generations. And it's coming at them from many different angles. And um, so I think that's one of the challenges. I think technology is wonderful, but they're also challenged with um, all this new technology and different ways to relate and connect. And you can have a conversation with someone, you know, through your text messaging, through Twitter, through Facebook, um, from across the world. Um, but you might be challenged in having some of the interpersonal relationships and dynamics with someone in the same room. And so I think the idea of friendship is different. Um, the idea of connectedness is different. And um, I think young people are challenged with trying to wrestle with um, how they um, grow and develop as human beings in this constantly shifting environment. And last, uh, last question, what advice do you have for a young person who wants to get more involved in their community? Mm -hmm. um, start right in your backyard, go out, talk to people, um, discover your own story. I think, what is your story? What is your connection to the community that you grew up in? How did you end up there? Um, what are the stories of the people that are around you? Um, the people that um, might be invisible to you that you don't necessarily talk to? Um, and try to find common ground through, through stories. And um, through that and through those relationships, I think you can develop bonds and you can develop a sense of obligation to um, each other through each other's stories and through each other's shared experiences. And that becomes a place to do some work from.